Hello friends, in today's video we're going to go over the best builds for beating the brand new 7 star terror raid event for Chesnaw that will be coming to Pokemon Scarlet and Violet later this week. So kicking off on the 12th of May and running through to the 14th of May for the first phase, Chesnaut will be coming to Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. The 7 star terror raid event will feature Chesnaut with the rock terror typing and of course it will have all of the standard attributes of a normal 7 star terror raid level 100, it will have the mightiest mark and you'll only be able to catch one of the per save file. So we're going to start the video off as always by taking a detailed look at what Chestnut has available and what we could expect to see going into this raid later this week. So as we've mentioned Chestnut is going to have that rock terror typing. It will have weaknesses to grass, to water, to ground, to steel and to fighting. But some of those typings you're not really going to want to bring into this raid because Chestnut has got good coverage and it obviously is its base typing is grass which is going to be super effective against ground types, super effective against water types making those Pokemon choices pretty difficult to bring into this raid. It's going to be level 100 and it will have that 30 times multiply to his HP so we'll be sitting at around 9510 HP points. That's the damage that you're going to have to do to remove this from the field and it will likely have its hidden ability bulletproof. Now for those of you that don't know bulletproof gives immunity to all ball and bomb type attack moves. Now these are categorized into this list here so things like acid spray that we generally use in terror raid events to reduce the special defense you're not going to be able to use that bulletproof gives immunity to that aurora sphere as well which would have been a great option going into this raid because chestnut has higher defense stat than its special defense stat but unfortunately it is immune to the aurora sphere so you're not going to be able to use that other notable ones are going to be focus blast gyro ball as well which would have been super effective magnet bomb seed bomb as well which would be super effective against this chestnut because of its rock terror typing and then the other one to mention is probably shadow ball so just bear in mind that these moves will carry an immunity with Chestnut having that bulletproof ability. Chestnut also not the fastest of Pokemon either. It's only got a base speed of 64 so the majority of things that we're going to be using against it are going to be naturally outspeeding it anyway. So that's quite a good thing to just keep it in mind going into this raid. Now the move options are obviously going to have rock typing because of the terror typing that it does have. Stone Edge and Rock Slide are probably the biggest kind of options that it's got. It does have access to Rock Tomb and interestingly Rollout as well as another option now there was a really good comment that said it would be funny to see the combination of defense curl on turn zero and then just go for those rollouts after the defense curl after it's got that buff to the move and then kind of just roll through your team that would be kind of funny to see i don't think that's going to happen but it is something to consider of course like everything going into this raid wood hammer and seed bomb seem to be its most powerful physical type attacks and just to bear in mind that chestnut will be a physical attacker it doesn't really have a very good special attacking stat it doesn't have good special attacking moves so it would make sense for it to be predominantly a physical type attacker so that's what we're going to prepare for going into this raid close combat and hammer arm are its big fighting type attacking moves that it does get access to and it also gets drain punch as well so it has a move where it can utilize that recovery and just remember as well steel types are going to be effective going into this raid so it makes sense for it to have fighting type coverage to combat those steel types. It also gets coverage with Earthquake, so it's got ground coverage there, Iron Head for steel type coverage, although I don't really see it having Iron Head, but it's just something to bear in mind if you were thinking about bringing maybe Sap, Sipper, Azumarill or something like that to this raid, that could be a little bit problematic. It does get Shadow Claw and Crunch as coverage moves. Now I could see one of these two on the Chestnut. That depends on the build, of course, but it would be good against some things that we're planning on bringing in to this raid in general it does also get zen headbutt as well so that's something to bear in mind so it really does get a wide variety of different coverage moves it gets other things that we haven't even put on the list like thunder punch as well so it really does have a good move pool going into this raid event and a lot of options that we have to consider now the things i probably see it having would be stone edge wood hammer Close Combat and Earthquake, they would be the main four I would see. I could probably see additional moves, maybe Shadow Claw or Crunch potentially, but I think the Earthquake, a big fighting type attack, grass type attack and then a rock type attack make a lot of sense going into this one now the setup options that it does have it does have some good setup options things that we'll have to be aware of bulk up and curse obviously they're in the same ballpark boosting attack and defense by one stage every turn you use it and you've got sword stance as well boosting two stages to that attack stat so it could get out of control quite quickly and become pretty threatening 
got iron defense as well. It's already got a sky high defensive stat, but it's something to consider. It is an option on there. And if it wants to combat against big physical steel or fighting type attacks because of its terror typing, then iron defense kind of makes sense here as well. It does get sunny day. Now this plays in effect with synthesis as well. So you can get that recovery there. And it is one of the starter Pokemon that does get access to a recovery move. Whether or not we'll see it, I don't know. But the one that I have kind of starred that I do have a little bit of a concern about going into this raid which I do suspect might be what we see is belly drum Now, belly drum isn't something that we've seen in past seven star terror raid events it was accessible on something like Charizard but we didn't see it there because it made more sense for the Charizard to be a special attacker but with chestnut being more of a physical attacker, I could really see the combination of belly drum on that turn zero where it maxes out its attack stat and then uses a combination of that and something like drain punch to recover its health back before the battle even begins now that could be quite scary and throw a huge curveball at everyone's preparations going into this raid event because it does change how people will have to go into the raid i have prepared a build specifically for this set if it comes up so don't worry about that we'll get into that as we get into the pokemon builds later on but that is something i think we have to really consider the belly drum drain punch combination you could even see synthesis as a support option on there as well but i do feel like that could be an option going into this one with the chest node and that plus six attack at the start of the battle if you don't have anything else to kind of help combat that especially if the shield goes up pretty early uh, you're going to be in a lot of trouble going into this raid and it is going to be a very difficult one now i think a lot of people think this is going to be probably quite a straightforward raid but i don't think this is going to be as easy as everyone thinks i think the intellion raid was very easy but I don't think the Chestnut one's gonna be as straightforward, but we'll wait and see, of course. So that's the overview of Chestnut. Let's jump into game and we can take a look at the Pokemon builds that we've got going into this one. Like I've mentioned, Chestnut is very strong on its physical defensive side of things. So a special attacker is gonna be preferable going into this raid. Now, the main one that I'm picking going into this raid initially is gonna be Goldengo. I feel like Goldengo is gonna be a really good Pokemon hitting on that special attacking side. It is gonna be able to do a lot of good damage super effective damage to this chestnut the only things you're going to have to worry about predominantly going into this raid are going to be the earthquake which could be there which i do suspect being there which will hit us for super effective damage and then either the shadow claw or the crunch which could be coverage moves that we see don't really need to worry about the grass type attacks the rock type attacks or the fighting type attacks coming into this one uh, you'd only have to worry about the fighting type attacks after you terrestrialize but by that point hopefully you're set up and you're in a good point just to kind of close out the game from there so the Goldingo build that we've got going into this one is going to have the steel terror typing. It is going to have the metal coat as its held item just to give that additional boost to its attacking moves. And the move set is going to be recover, nasty plot, metal sound and make it rain. We've got recovery there with recover. We've got nasty plot helps us set up our special attack game. Gives us better damage options. Metal sound plays off that nicely because we're going to be able to reduce the special defense on the chest note by two stages every time you use it. And then kind of combining that doubling it up with the make it rain now if you don't want to use make it rain because it does reduce your special attack every time you use it you can opt to use something like flash cannon which is a bit more consistent because you're not getting the drops and you're doing that good damage every turn now the ev spread is 252 special attack and then 252 defense with the four in hp we've got that good as gold ability with a modest nature and that is gold dingo so i think a really good option and really probably one of the best ones before we go into this of course when we see the move set when the event goes live we can assess whether or not this is going to be the best option but a very solid option as we prepare for it going into it and i'm sure a lot of you already have a goldingo built in your games next one up is going to be coridon coridon going to have that fighting type and dragon typing so it is going to have super effective same type attack going into this rock terror type chest node it is going to resist the rock type attacks it is going to resist any of the grass type attacks the only thing that you would really need to worry about is if it does have dragon coverage it does get access to dragon claw but i don't really see it getting that and the other option is zen headbutt but they're kind of really far out options that i probably don't expect it to have although it does have access to those moves now we go with the fighting terror typing on this one we've given it the black belt item it gives it a 20 percent boost to any fighting type attack so it's a good item choice to have on it if you don't want the recovery but i don't feel like we need it with this set because we are running drain punch which gives you that great line of recovery we're pairing that up with bulk up screech and sword Stance. so bulk up and sword stance seem to conflict there but bulk up gives you a different option where you can boost your defense stat as well as your attacking stat obviously sword stance cuts down the turns that you need to 
boost your attacking stat and then Screech combines with that nicely to reduce the defensive stat on the Chestnut. We've got an EV spread of 252 attack and then 252 defense that just allows you to take some more of these big physical type attacking moves a lot easier and allow that setup with the Screech and the Swords Dance and then we've got the Drain Punch to kind of play on there where we're going to be able to have a line of recovery where we don't need to worry about having the Shell Bell where we can have a boosting item on there like the Black Belt to give us a bit more power every turn but I feel like Coriodon going to be a very solid option going into this raid especially because of its base stats as well it's going to be able to come in and handle Chestnut pretty well. Next Pokemon we're featuring is Corviknight. I love Corviknight coming into this raid flying and steel typing with the steel terror typing and we've given it the expert belt here. Again you're going to take neutral damage from the rock type moves but if it's got something like Stone Edge you don't really need to worry about that too much because it is lower accuracy. Corviknight already has sky high defense stats so it will be able to take those pretty well but you're going to be able to resist the grass type attacks. The fighting type attacks will be neutral as well and if it does carry a ground type coverage move then you're going to be immune to it until you do terrestrialize late in the game but like I say by then hopefully along the lines of the Goldingo you're set up and in a good position to not worry about that so much and just lay damage out onto the field. Like I say we've got the expert belt as the item. The move set that we've got here is going to be roost, screech, bulk up and iron head so roost just bear in mind it is an egg move you can find something in your boxes with roost then just delete a move off the cover night and then give it the mirror herb item set up a picnic with the other roost pokemon in your party and it will transfer over to cover night so you've got that line of recovery on the move set screech we know about bulk up we know about and then iron head going to be super effective into this chest note and a really good option i feel with, with that mirror armor ability as well but not so important going into this raid uh, with an ev spread of 252 attack and then 252 defense just to maximize your attacking output as well maximize your defensive abilities with the cover knight on the field next up we couldn't do one of these without featuring a good old friendly annihilate and yes i think annihilate probably will be very good going into this raid once again just naturally bulky able to take a bunch of hits able to set up and do some big damage in return we give it the black belt item of course you can change that up you could go shell bell if you wanted you could go with expert belt but the black belt like i've already mentioned gives you a 20 percent boost to fighting type attacks and that's primarily what we're going for here we've got the fighting terror typing on this one i feel like it's more optimal move set we're going for is drain punch bulk up screech and then rage fist the defiant ability there and an ev spread it is a little different from other annihilates but we maximize in that attack stat with an adamant nature and then maximizing our defense stat as well so that should be 252 in attack 252 in defense as well um, and then the rest just put in hp but the annihilate pretty straightforward like other annihilates what you're going to do is try and utilize that screech it will depend when the shield goes up on the chest note if you can use that but if you can utilize it try and get a few screeches off and you can utilize your bulk ups and then just plow through with those drain punches until you can terrestrialize and then you're going to be able to probably make quick work of this chest note like i say i couldn't really not feature the annihilate because it feels like such a good option going into this raid now the next option is going to be lucario now i feel like lucario could be a good option here i initially thought ah aurora sphere this special attacking lucario could be good going into this raid but you got to remember about that bulletproof ability of aurora sphere is going to be immune from the chest node so it's not going to be any good so you have to go down a physical route with the lucario which is a little bit unfortunate uh, we have got the fighting terror typing on this a uh, black belt again for that 20 percent increase to fighting type attacks but with the steel typing and the fighting typing you get that four times resist to rock type attacks you're not going to worry too much about the grass type attacks and you're only going to have to really be concerned about those ground type attacks that the chest node could have as coverage now with the move set we've got iron defense screech sword stance and drain punch here and an ev spread of 252 attack 252 defense with the rest put in hp and the ability here we have got justified but we don't really need to worry about that too much it's not really anything that makes any difference going into this terror raid so the idea of this set is to make sure that you get your iron defenses up if it has got that coverage move like earthquake even if not it's probably worth just getting an iron defense up at the start of the battle utilize screech like you would do with the annihilate with the cryodon to lower that defense defensive stat of the chest snort and then sword stance and then just plow through with the drain punches until you can terrestrialize and you should be able to do this pretty easily now it's not got as high base stats as something like annihilate or the cryodon of course but the lucario still can hold its own and i really like that fighting and steel typing as well just because you get so many resists 
to the things that Chestnut can throw out. And I feel like a Lucario is a different option and could potentially be quite good going into this Terror Raid event. Now, the final one that we are going to feature today, and I did mention it a little bit earlier when we were looking at the details of the Chestnut and I suspect the Belly Drum and that Drain Punch combination. That could be quite deadly going into this raid. And this is why I've got Clods there. It might sound a little bit weird, but it is the only Pokemon that would be able to go into this raid with the unaware ability and do some good work going into it. Um, obviously, we're giving the expert belt item because we do have a line of recovery with recover. We've got the ground terror typing on there. You've just got to be careful with the ground terror typing because when you do terrestrialize, you'll be more susceptible to those big grass type attacks that Chestnut definitely does carry uh, uh, with the poison typing your neutral damage but hopefully by then you've got some curses under your belt so you're not taking as much damage from those attacks as possible like I say the moveset is going to be recover line of recovery his is there because if they nullify your stats and abilities early on in the game and they have set up either with a belly drum or with a sword stance then you've got the option where you can just haze before you start setting up with your own curses and then you can start utilizing uh, earthquake Quick once you have set up EV spread just to make sure that we've got the longevity to stay on the field to utilize the haze, utilize the curse and the recovers and things like that. We're maximizing our HP, maximizing our defense, and then we've got the curse to rely on to boost our attack stat. And then our main attacking option is going to be the earthquake, which is going to be the big power hitting move when we are all set up. But I do feel if we do see something like that belly drum combination on turn zero, which I do suspect we might see, and then the combination of drain punch cloud site is going to be something to fall back on and i feel will do a good job going into this raid if we don't see the belly drum of course then i think the other option that we've already featured here will be just as good as anything else um it's just i do have concerns that we're going to see a curveball this week and it could be the belly drum because it's an option that would make sense on it it's an option that would make this raid incredibly difficult when a lot of people have been saying recently annihilate so easy just to pick and bring into this raid well i think if we saw the belly drum i don't think annihilate would be a pokemon that would be easily able to bring into this raid because you're going to see the belly drum if it's got coverage moves with something like even shadow claw it could just cut that and annihilate out pretty quickly and you've got to think that game freak are looking at these seven star raids and thinking there's got to be a time when we stop this annihilate shenanigans going on so maybe this is the week maybe belly drum is the option but like i say if it is clod sire is going to be a good option for combating against that belly drum setup the unaware is brilliant it just ignores the belly drum and you can just get on with kind of wiping the stats to support fellow team members if you're doing this online and then set yourself up and then start cutting through it that way but other than that i think these are the best builds to prepare going into this raid and of course when the raid goes live later this week we will cover it as soon as the raid goes out and we've done a bit of testing with the best pokemon to solo this with but i would love to hear your thoughts on what you think will be the best build going into this new terror raid event later this week please leave your comments down below i look forward to reading through them thank you so much for tuning into today's video please Please drop a like if you found today's video useful. Do subscribe to the channel so you stay up to date with all of our Pokemon Scarlet and Violet content. And I will see you all in another video very soon, friends. Thank you for tuning in. Take care of yourselves. Have a great rest of your day. Until then, bye-bye.